All right, so the M66 jungle hammock was actually designed after a captured North Vietnamese hammock. It was put into production and sent over to Vietnam to US troops. It did have some major downfalls, and some of those downfalls are still a problem today, even for use as an outdoorsman. However, they do make a very lightweight, packable piece of kit, and they're very multifunctional. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today, and the reason I'm kind of looking at this as a multifunctional system that can pack into a small package or backpack and be used as an emergency camp. Not something where you plan to go out and be comfortable camping all weekend, but something that you have to set up for a night because you couldn't get out of the woods for some reason, or it was too late to walk out, possibly got injured, have to walk out the next day, ran out of gas on a four wheeler or something like that and had to wait for someone to bring you gas. Whatever the case may be that you have to spend an unplanned camping night in the woods, this thing could be a good option. It is very multifunctional. So let's talk about that as we kind of put together a little bit of a kit that we're going to experiment with for the ATV. Okay, so a couple of the really quick inherent problems with this system. Number one is the material itself was made out of a thick nylon material. It's almost like a 200 denier, if I had to guess. It was made thick enough so the mosquitoes could not bite through it, but it was also so thick that it was pretty much waterproof, which means that if you went to bed in this thing wet, you're going to wake up wet. If you can't cover this thing so that rain doesn't come down into it, you're going to wake up in a bathtub. It's also short. So someone like me that's only five foot, seven and a half, five foot eight, I could sleep in this for a couple of days and it wouldn't bother me. Someone who was taller than that, like six foot, is not going to be comfortable in this thing. Just like trying to make an improvised hammock from a poncho. You're not going to be comfortable in that thing. However, for an emergency piece of kit for a smaller person like me that weighs 200 pounds is only, you know, right at five foot eight, it's not a bad sleep. And you can put a poncho over the top of it, a military-style poncho. This one happens to be a Helicon. But you could use a military-style poncho as well if you could find one surplus, like this hammock is surplus. And then you would have a complete system for a hammock. So there's also two-inch sleeves in the end of this thing on both ends. And those lend themselves to also being used. In the diagram, it shows this. Sticks going through there to use them to widen the hammock out so it's not crunched up on the ends and sleep under it that way as well. But because it's such a good waterproof type material, it also makes a good ground sheet. And for me, what I'm looking for is a system that I can use multifunctionally in an emergency. That if I want to go in the air or I want to hang, I can do it. If I want to go to the ground, I can do it. So I've got to put a couple of things with this system. But just the hammock and the poncho give you rain gear, a tarp, and a sleep system in a fairly small package. And we'll talk about how we're going to package that in a couple minutes. And I've got a couple plastic tent stakes with it. I'll probably put four in here all together in case I want to fly the tarp. But what I have found is that the Helicon tarp is a little shorter, I think, than the military issue tarp was. And so it doesn't lend itself well to a square configuration or a rectangle configuration over the hammock as it shows in a diagram. You have to put it on an angle to be able to cover this hammock with it. But it does work fine for that. And then you just have an angle on both sides of wings that you stake out. It only takes two stakes to stake it out that way. But if I wanted to go to ground and run a fly, then I would want the four stakes at least to be able to stake out the four corners with ropes and guy lines. Another thing I want to talk about real quick is I've taken my six foot lines from my cordage management system. And I've added a small inch and a half Delrin toggle to that. And this comes from that rapid deployment ridge line system and how it interlocks. Now I can use that to just place the loop through here, take that Delrin toggle and trap it. And at that point, what I have is I have an adjustment here that I can pull down through just like this. Right up to where my stop knot's at and lock it in place. And now I can use this loop to stake out with okay once you've done that you've got a very simple adjustment system here because now you can just take this tag in and pull on it and it's going to adjust that rope as tight as you want it and it's going to lock in place it's the perfect system for these guy lines by just adding that Delrin toggle. And I just ordered this Delrin straight off of Amazon, just cut it to length and drill holes in it. But I put one of these on each one of my guy lines I've got in my shelter system now. 
because it's just an easy, easy system to get things really nice and tight. When you want to loosen the system, all you have to do is pull straight up on it and it basically loosens up itself. And then all you have to do if you want to tighten it again is just pull straight down and it will self lock. Okay, so I'm trying to build a kit based around this four wheeler, which already has a lot of the survival equipment on it. But I'd like to put some kind of a backpack with that and a surplus option like this assault pack is a good option for that because it lends itself well to sitting in the basket nice and tidy with a dry bag beside it for some other goods. And then it can be taken and things can be added to the pack from this four wheeler if I want to walk away from it. So my main concerns are, does my sheltering system fit in here? I mean, my canteen obviously is going to fit wherever I put it on the four wheeler or on my belt. So my canteen set, utensils, cup, all that stuff, that's all always there. I've got a two quart canteen that you saw on there as well as a water bladder inside the top compartment with several different types of filtering options. I've got all that covered. So as far as the survival stuff goes, other than the sheltering type option, most of that's covered already on the four wheeler itself. So if I can contain the shelter system in here and then add the things in that I may need if I walk away, that's what I'm looking for. Now, I've got a bag here. This also came from a surplus store. I don't know what was stored in this bag originally. It's just an OD green denier bag. But to me, it's going to be perfect because I'm going to stuff the hammock in there for one thing. I've got it all rolled up and the rope's tied around it. And I'm going to shove it down inside there. And I think there's going to be plenty of room in there to also stuff the poncho. So I'm not going to try to stuff that poncho back into that little bitty stuff sack it comes with. I'm just going to try to put it inside this bag so all of that stuff's contained, but the rain element, if I need it, is on the top, so it's easily accessible. Once I stuff all that in the bag, I should have room inside that bag to shove three or four tent stakes in there. I say three or four, I mean four. I shove them around the outside here, just like that. Rope kit can go in the top. Again, cordage easily accessible. And then cinch all of that down around it with the cinch cord. And that basically gives me, as far as the hanging shelter goes, this gives me everything I need plus rain gear. Now, what would I add to that for multifunctionality? Okay, so the next thing I would put in this kit would be a Swagman roll. What this is gonna give me is it's gonna give me an under quilt or over quilt situation. The last thing I might think about with that is this blow up ground mat. This is a snug, snug pack blow up ground mat. I actually got this thing at a sale for like 10 bucks and I've blown it up and it works fine. So it's cheap as well. So this is not a real expensive kit, not necessarily common man. You have a swagman roll in here, but it's not an overly expensive kit for what it's going to do for me in an emergency. But if I have this, I can go to ground number one, which we talked about with that hammock putting it on the ground. Now we have a ground pad but we can also use this in the bottom of the hammock itself in place of an underquilt so that I could just use this swagman roll as an overquilt, use this to battle the convection problem, and then have my whoopee, if it's that cold, my, my whoopee hoodie to use as a pillow, which I've done videos on as well, like I said. So that's a good system. Now, in this black bag, I can't really disclose what's in this black bag, but I think you could guess if you looked hard enough. But that added with this makes it probably the most versatile shelter system you could get in one small package because it will do lots and lots of things from the ground to the air, different configurations on the ground, a couple different configurations by, for a hammock, and you have a lot of versatility with a kit like that. And it should all fit pretty easy in this assault pack and give me some room to put some other essentials in, the front, in there if I need to. Let's just jam this at the bottom. We'll put our swag in next, our swagman roll, because it's pretty thick and bulky. And that only has to leave us room really now for this. Think about these military surplus packs over there. You pretty much can really jam stuff into them and not worry too much about tearing them up. That's the good thing about them. Now, we've got that thing jammed in there tight, right? 
tight. There's no room literally left inside this pack. However, we also have this huge front pocket that has absolutely nothing in it that we can put a ton of stuff in. So we have our shelter system enclosed in this backpack and that's really all that's in here is sheltering elements. But everything else that we need peripherally, even this canteen can go around the outside or even two canteens if I wanted to. And everything else can be put inside, but anything I need quick access to can go in this outer pocket that I pull off that four wheeler when I go and I'm ready to rock and roll. It's just that simple. All right, so again, you know, Everything in this kit is not exactly what I would call common man or inexpensive. It's all good quality stuff. A lot of it's military surplus. And obviously, if you read the books by the old timers like Kephart, Hyatt Vera, Warren Miller, all of those guys talked about using surplus kit because it was available back in those days. And a lot of people used surplus from the world wars for camping kit. And we still do it today. I've seen it. For the last 15 years, I see bushcrafters using surplus kit within their main bushcrafting kit. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever because the stuff is made heavy duty and it's going to last for a long, long, long time. All right, guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me out here today for a quick video around the classroom area on this kit that I'm building out for the ATV. We definitely will get some ATV camping in as soon as we possibly can. I've just got a lot of stuff going on right now that kind of precludes me from spending that kind of time outdoors all in one shot. I can come out, you know, do two, three hours here, three or four hours there. But to spend an entire day and a night out here to shoot a video is difficult for me right now with all the classes that I'm teaching and other appointments that I've got and things like that going on. But we'll get to it. I guarantee it. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business. All of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.